Welcome to the shooting show. Stand by for shots fired. Hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, and welcome again to this week's shooting show. We've really got a terrific show. We're going to go to the Soldier Fortune Convention, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Friends, I tell you what, come on now, let's join the shooting show gun club because rifles like these uh, SKS uh, and AKs and other guns, the semi automatics, uh, may not be with us for a long time. The people in Washington and on certain local levels are trying desperately to take these guns away from us. Uh, this particular gun is an SKS, has a 10 round fixed magazine. It is not, it does not have a folding stock. Uh, I think this stock started. Uh, out its career as a folding stock, but it's been pinned in place because uh, according to uh, what we're hearing from ATF, the folding stocks are not legal. I'll tell you what, friends, the uh, SKS is the best uh, firearms bargain to come along here in the United States for many years, and we think that every responsible person should be able to own one of these guns. They're a lot of fun to shoot. They're extremely reliable. Ammunition has been plentiful and cheap. So, uh, like I said, if you want a semi-automatic gun of any type, I would not put it off. I would go ahead and make plans to get whatever I wanted, be it handgun or, in fact, a rifle like this. Well, we have a great show for you. Again, now's the time to join the Shoot and Show Gun Club because, friends, through our efforts around the country, through this program and our fun gun days, we intend to do something about uh, some of these crazy regulations that are going on in different parts of the country. It's outrageous. You know, if the... If the Second Amendment was enforced as well as the First Amendment, a while back uh, some of the people in the Justice Department were talking about censorship, and my goodness, the news media, everybody went up in arms over that. Well, why not the Second Amendment? Uh, why shouldn't it be thought of and respected and enforced just as much as any other amendment? Because, in fact, it's the Second Amendment that keeps all of the others in place. And you can talk about the well-regulated militia if if someone will go back and read at what that meant, the well-regulated militia, is who's going to be in charge of the local militia. It had nothing to do with the National Guard. It was strictly regulation of officers and, and the uh, protocol in the local militias, of which every uh, able-bodied man between the ages of, I believe, 18 and 65 are a part. And you can check my figures on that as far as ages go. But that was the unorganized militia. And it ought to be today, doggone it. So we're going to do something about it, absolutely. Well, let's get another shooting show started. You know, friends, talking about the militia, it really had nothing to do with guns. The founders of the country wanted to ensure that the general population, certainly of responsible people, would always be armed and always ready for some sort of emergency. And I tell you what, we have one. <laughs> We have an emergency going on right now in government, believe me, but hopefully we can work this out. Anyway, moving right along, we're going to look at a couple of Grendel pistols today. In fact, we're going to look at one in particular. Uh, this is the Grendel P30, and you can see it is in comparison to the Grendel uh, 380, which we have here. Also in the picture, we have the uh, Ruger 357 Magnum GP100. You can tell the three guns, the P30 is a shall we say, a medium-large gun. It's really not, uh, certainly no larger than a, uh, say, a Glock uh, 17 or something like that. And I use the Glock because there are some similarities in this Grendel P30 and the Glock. The frame on the P30 is made of a very durable plastic. Now, the top, the uh, uh, slide is, of course, made of steel. You have plastic in places where... Uh, the strength of the parts is not critical, and in the parts where you need steel, you have steel. I tell you what, friends, these are extremely uh, nicely made guns, and I, you know, one of the things about my job here on the program is we get to see literally all kinds of product that comes through here. And you know, when, when something comes through and it's a real good price, the concept is real good, well, you tend to say, well, wait a minute. You know, is this too good to be true or what? And believe me, sometimes it is. Some of the products we see do not work nearly as well as their publicity would suggest. Well, I'm here to tell you that the Grendels, uh, I think, work better than their publicity. These are excellent guns. Uh, certainly the samples we, uh, we have here today are just terrific, both in concept, terrific in pricing. And you know, when you get a very fine quality gun, one that works reliably, certainly in a semi-automatic, 
at a very uh, reasonable price, well, I think that's something that we can all be very pleased about. Uh, certainly those of us who like to shoot, who in fact like semi-automatic pistols. Well, just to talk about the Grendel, the first Grendel I really saw was, uh, I suppose, at a, a shot show a couple of years ago, and then I saw a couple in gun shops. Didn't know too much about them. They were are, are a relatively new company even today. They've been around for a number of years, but as gun companies go, uh, they are a relatively new company. But uh, they've been making the 380 uh, type guns for several years, and this is a little gun that we had on our program last year. It's a Grendel 380. It's called the P12, I believe, and it has a detachable magazine, and this gun holds a total of 12 rounds. Now, we're going to do something today that, to uh, tell you the truth, I don't know how it's going to come out. This particular Grendel was shot a number of times. Oh, it's been over a year ago since it's been fired. And then the gun was put up in storage. And it's been in, a, in an area out here on the farm that uh, was not really exposed to weather, but it was certainly exposed to heat and cold. And what we're going to do, we have a fully loaded Grendel. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if it's going to work or not because uh, many times when some automatics are left loaded and stored uh, uh, due to uh, dirt that has accumulated from shooting, because a lot of you out there are, gonna, are not going to maintain your gun certainly as well as, as we would like. And this is a little gun that we did on purpose. We shot it a number of times, 30, 40 times, got it fairly dirty, and then we put it up. So we're going to shoot it on the program today. And let's see what happens. Again, this Grendel, like our P30 here, has a plastic frame, but the metal is where it counts. And the service record on these little guns, to my understanding, has been real good. So let's see what happens. Let's, uh, let's shoot the gun. And, of course, having a light frame, you've got to have that stiff wrist. Now, the Grendel 380, the model of uh, P12 here, is a double action only. It, uh, you have to uh, cock the hammer with the trigger every time and and it only works by uh, pulling the trigger it is not a single action uh, in the sense that we're normally used to it has a double action trigger pull the trigger both cocks and releases the hammer hence double action so let's see what happens again this little gun was put up dirty and because we wanted to find out just in fact how reliable at least this one would be so let's see what happens let's uh, let's shoot the gun and it is loaded and put my hearing protection in just a little better because certainly it's going to be loud. Let's see what happens. I'm as curious as you are. I, ho I think it's probably going to work, but of course you never know. Let's find out. Well. Well, friends, I'll tell you what. That's with Winchester silver tips. And uh, I think that is terrific performance. It shot all of them in the magazine and certainly the one in the chamber without a bobble. Uh, needless to say, I'm impressed because, like I said, it was dirty and put up. So uh, I think that speaks awfully well for the reliability of the Grendel. It's, uh, it's light, but it's not punishing to shoot. It's not bad at all. And these are excellent uh, and very concealable guns. They're reasonably accurate, uh, certainly to the ranges we shot, or if I remember shooting it last year, uh, we thought it was, it was pretty accurate. Certainly for, the, uh, for what it is, it is a most uh, uh, excellent bargain and piece of equipment. Uh, as I said, they're not very expensive. Uh, they're very simple to operate. This one, of course, being double action only, all you have to do is point and pull the trigger. You don't have to worry about taking a safety off, putting a safety on, because when that trigger is forward, that hammer is down, it's in a safe condition. So needless to say, I'm impressed. Well, let's look at the next Grendel. Now this is one that not a lot of you have seen. Uh, certainly I hadn't uh, seen one until recently. And Clark's Custom Guns loaned us this gun. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Clark himself told me that uh, these Grendels were very fine guns. Uh, you know, when you have something that is less expensive like this, a lot of us tend not to take them seriously. Well, Mr. Clark himself told me that <laughs> these are, in fact, serious guns. Uh, the top half sort of looks like, uh, if I remember correctly, an Astra 400, and of course the bottom half sort of reminds you of a Glock. It is somewhat blocky in your hand, but friends, uh, this gun is in 22 Magnum chambering, 
And as you've often heard me say here on the program, the 22 Magnum is one of the most underrated cartridges going. And this, uh, I, I have to qualify that, you must have the hollow point uh, uh, bullet for the 22 Magnum to really uh, show what it can do. But uh, this little gun uh, has a plastic magazine. Again, it, it works extremely well. It holds 30 rounds. That's why it's called the P30. Now, wait a minute, friends. Now, you know, I am not one of the spray and pray advocates uh, to, to spray bullets across the countryside and pray it hit something. I don't agree with that at all. But this may be the ultimate trail gun or certainly one of the ultimate outdoor trail guns because you can have a loaded magazine in the gun with 30 22 Magnum rounds, and this gun has proven to be extremely reliable. And I'll tell you what, friends, you wouldn't have to carry any spare ammunition. It's all in the gun. And, of course, uh, it looks like it's going to be rust-resistant. Of course, the frame can't rust. It's made out of plastic. But, uh, of course, it's sort of a super plastic, a very a strong, some sort of strong uh, uh, a plastic mixture. Who knows what it is? I think that the durability of plastic has pretty much been settled by the durability of the Glock and guns like the Nylon 66 Remington, which have been uh, uh, compiled such terrific service records. And, you know, the best thing I could say about this P-30, it works, and it works, and it works. Rimfire ammunition, the 22 Magnums, tend to be dirty ammunition when you shoot it. One, because the 22 Magnum uh, has a slower burning type powder than a lot of the 22 long rifles that we're used to shooting. So you're going to have a little powder buildup in this short barrel, of course. But let me tell you what, we have shot this thing and shot this thing. <laughs> We ran at about 150 or so rounds without cleaning and have had no malfunctions. And I just think that's terrific. Now, I did clean it uh, to come on today's program, but it is a most impressive piece of equipment. We're going to take a closer look at it in just a moment, but, but what is so neat, you have very little recoil, you have an ambidextrous safety, and watch this. Of course, the slide, it does have a strong spring. It is a delayed blowback type action. It has little grooves around the circumference of the chamber itself that retard the slide coming back until pressures have dropped. So it's a very well thought out, very finely engineered little gun. It comes down very easy for cleaning. Most impressive. All right, friends, let's shoot the uh, Grendel. We've loaded it, pull that slide all the way back, let it go. We'll push our safety off and watch it in my hands anyway. See, just no recoil whatsoever has a real nice trigger. And we have our have our volunteer water jug out here. Let's see what the 22 Magnum does on the water jug. I'll tell you what, friends, that 22 Magnum is a vastly underrated cartridge. I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's take a closer look at our Grendel P30. Awesome firepower. Precision rifle skills. That's what you'll find along with lots more in these two great new videos, Marine Corps Firepower and Marine Corps Silent Drill Team. See an actual firepower demonstration of the latest Marine Corps weapons of the infantry, including the M220 Echo Tow Missile System, grenade launchers, mortars, and lots more. Plus the Marine Corps Silent Drill Team, an incredible display of precision rifle handling skills by the most respected and admired rifle squad in the world. Two great new videos for one low price. Just $19.95 through this special TV offer. Marine Corps Firepower and Marine Corps Silent Drill Team. Two videos for the price of one. Call and order yours right now. Call toll-free with your credit card ready. 1-800-942-8273. By ordering today, you'll receive this 32-page gun video catalog absolutely free. So order now. 1-800-942-8273. Call now. The Shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
Now, friends, you can see that uh, certainly the uh, bottom part here is plastic, but it blends in so well with the metal parts. I tell you, it's really a, a very nice package. You can see it has pretty good sights. You can easily see. Uh, you can see that front sight really well and that black in the back notch there. And the sights are made of plastic, and you can adjust them with the use of a grinder or a pocket knife if you want to. Now, we're shooting Winchester uh, 22 rimfire magnum ammunition because that's what has functioned best in the gun and of course before we shoot down there we're going to have to move those those puppies out of the way but you have an ambidextrous safety that uh, is very positive and I tell you what friends it's really a nice package of course loaded in the base of the grip like so and here's your magazine release right here uh, really a nice package well let's shoot the gun so as we move our our animals out of the way and uh, see what kind of accuracy we get all right, friends, to load our Grendel, we've already got the magazine in place. Pull that slide all the way to the rear and let it go. And, of course, we're not going to apply the safety because we're about to shoot. And you can see how we center that front sight right underneath that black target there. All right, let's shoot it again. And... And now we're going to apply our safety. Now then, friends, let's go forward and take a look at our group of five shots. And I tell you what, that's outstanding accuracy here at about 10 yards or so offhand. Uh, that's a less than a one-inch group. It's about a three-quarter of an inch group. So again, our Grendel, because it has a fixed barrel, really has some terrific accuracy potential. Friends, we have really enjoyed shooting and handling this Grendel P30. Again, the 22 Magnum is one of my favorite cartridges, uh, certainly for small game. And as I've said before on the show, you know, if you're recoil sensitive, if you're not comfortable shooting a 38 Special or a 9 millimeter, maybe you have, uh, you're an older person who's just not comfortable with recoil, well, the 22 Magnum with the right uh, bullet profile, which is the jacketed hollow points, uh, very common, uh, may be an alternative that certainly is worth looking at. This gun functions really well with the Winchester uh, 22 Magnum cartridges. We tried the CCIs, and uh, due to the operating characteristics of the 22 Rimfire Magnum itself, uh, certain uh, companies' loadings are not as successful in different auto-loading guns. So uh, another gun that's ammunition-sensitive is the uh, AMT uh, Auto Mag 2. It's also sensitive to what kind of ammunition, but the Winchesters function extremely well in this gun. Uh, again, you've got all the firepower I think you you would really need in 22 Magnum, and these guns have really been a nice surprise. I would uh, certainly suggest, of course, none of us know what's going to happen with semi-automatic guns in the future. Uh, these guns are very attractively priced. And I tell you what, if you'd like to have one, and if you're a shooting enthusiast, yes, you probably would like to have one of these. I believe I'd go ahead and get one as soon as I could. Because up close and personal, I tell you what, they're excellent uh, for what they are. Because you can shoot them accurately. And of course, all our uh, shots here are within this ring. Uh, they're easy to shoot well. And for those of us who are recall sensitive or just like a fun uh, semi-automatic 22 Magnum to play around with, uh, they definitely are great for that. The Grendel P30. Yeah. Now, friends, by now, those of you who've watched our show for some time, you know that when our program comes on, you need to get a pencil and a piece of paper because we're always going to have some phone numbers uh, that you'll really be interested in. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of calls about where to find Grendel's, so... I'm going to give you a chance to hey, call them and tell them you saw it on the shooting show if you would. That's Grendel Incorporated for information on the Grendel products. And call them at area 407-636-1211. Again, area 407-636-1211. Hi, I'm Bob Brown, Vietnam veteran and publisher of Soldier of Fortune magazine. Described by some as the most politically incorrect magazine in the United States. Every issue, we publish in-depth, provocative articles by our investigative reporters on the efforts of gun-grabbing politicians and the BATF to undermine our Second Amendment rights and what you can do to stop them. 
Also on site coverage of the government's abuse of power has occurred in the Randy Weaver tragedy and the Waco fiasco. No puff, no fluff, in-depth technical reviews of new firearms and ammo. In short, hard-hitting action articles of immediate interest to all real Americans, available from no other mainstream media. You need the other side of the story. That's why I'm offering a one-year subscription to Soldier of Fortune for only $22. That's over a 50% saving. Also, we're going to throw in a free 67-page bonus coverage of all our Waco material that's appeared in Soldier of Fortune and how it affects you. Call our 1-800 number now. And friends, you can call our Shoot and Show 800 number. That's 1-800-895-7916. Ask for Department SOF for Soldier of Fortune, and we'll take MasterCard or Visa, check or money order. So call us at 1-800-895-7916, Department SOF, $22 for a year of Soldier of Fortune plus the Waco Supplement. It's a great bargain, friends, for a great magazine. Now, friends, we've been talking about the Soldier Fortune Convention for some time now, and this is a program that I know you're really going to enjoy because we have some things that you just can't see uh, many other places, if, in fact, anywhere else. Uh, here we are in Las Vegas at the Sands Hotel, and, of course, if, if you've never been to Las Vegas, you just have to go to believe it. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty outrageous. But the people were so nice. Uh, everyone was so uh, courteous and polite and very helpful and really it's a great place to have a convention. We so much enjoyed uh, the interesting people we met and of course some of the exhibits and displays in the convention hall were things that most of you would really have a lot of interest in. So what we're going to do, we've got a lot of ground to cover here because there's so many things around the convention that we did photograph and uh, certainly bring back for you folks to, to look at here on the show. We're going to be covering part of the shooting matches, some of the firepower demonstration. We're going to go to the convention floor and visit with some of the exhibitors there. I think you're really going to enjoy it. So we'll get started now with the Soldier Fortune Convention, 1993. Now, friends, the Soldier Fortune match is a three-gun match. And here we have Bob Brown, who's going to take uh, us through and show us a couple of stages of fire in different parts of the match. He's going to demonstrate it for us. Colonel, if you'll face down range and make ready. Okay, Colonel, you're about to engage a hostage scenario. Are you ready? Ready. Draw to the guard. Draw to the guard. Shooter ready? Stand by. Ready? They're down. Go. Left foot, cover. Left foot. Left foot in. Left foot in. Right here, right over here. We're in another one of the stages. The colonel is going to be shooting the crack house scenario that uh, we featured a little earlier, following some other competitors through, receiving instructions. Uh, and then we'll try and follow behind them and show you how it's done. Instead of starting the pistol out and tight basically something like this or like this, and again using the fire in the wheel for cover, shoot it those four. Right. Right. When you move down there, you'll shoot at the low four. Both of them are pistol pickup. Shoot the shotgun, pick up the shotgun, shoot the window, and then go engage four targets. Shoot the door, right? Move to the window, target the back of the door, stop it. Right. <laughs> we'll go through the normal shooter commands. I'll ask you if you're ready. Roger. You'll say, give me a Roger. We'll say stand by, ready, and then there'll be a beep. Okay. Okay. Very good. 
Okay, go ahead and draw your pistol. And assume your position behind the car. Just a little bit to your left. And you can be sighted right in on a target. Is the shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. Ready? the gun from the former officer. As you can see, we have several phone crews out here with us. panoramic view to bring us on board here outside Las Vegas and we're gathered here for the annual world championship soldier of fortune three-gun tactical match in Las Vegas Nevada I'm gonna be starting here at stage three only because it's the closest one to the parking lot stage three is called Beirut sniper Beirut Sniper is a uh, six-station continuous assault with a total of 12 targets, 11 steel knockdown targets, and one cardboard target. We're here at position one, firing from the prone position uh, to a long-range target. And our targets are way out there. As you can see, a lot of running is involved in these stages. What we'll try and do a little bit uh, later on is get permission from one of the shooters to perhaps follow the line along with them so that we can see exactly what they're seeing. One of the competitors has uh, granted us permission to follow behind him. To give you an idea more or less what he's uh, seeing. His first set of targets are these three steel plates that are directly in front of him. Two on the left, one on the right. Stage two, the Israeli bus rescue is a pistol shotgun combination reactive uh, target. We'll give you kind of a uh, brief overview of uh, what the target scenario looks like. Here's some of the uh, range staff here at the uh, Israeli bus exercise, and they help ensure make sure that everything uh, remains as safe as possible. No My gang ain't here. Start inside the truck. And he's engaging the first set of targets with his pistol. He now retrieves his shotgun. He has to fire at a target over the hood of the truck. As you can hear, a uh, still hit and fell. Another one. Another one. Doing very well. Now he's moving on to his next position. moving to the front. They have to use tactical use of the vehicles. So they can't just stand out in the open and be a target themselves. Now some of these targets we're not going to be able to see once he enters the bus. Okay. You bet. We'll be right back with more of the shooting show after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
friends for the absolute best in monthly shooting magazines turn to Shooting Times. They have all sorts of excellent features on handguns, rifles, shotguns, and black powder by some of your favorite gun writers. Each month you'll find interesting articles on guns, shooting, reloading, and new products in the firearms industry, along with information on pending legislation of interest to all gun owners. For subscription information, call 1-800-727-4353. Again, 1-800-727-4353. Shooting times, the best there is. After a long day in the field, be sure, and I mean absolutely sure, that your gun is unloaded. Hi, I'm Gritz Gresham, and a rule that makes a lot of sense to me is to establish a safety zone around your camp or vehicle. And within that zone, all firearms must be unloaded, without exception. Remember, firearm safety depends on you. Make no mistake about it. This message is a public service of this station and the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Now friends, we're going to go back to the matches in just a moment, but let's watch some firepower demonstrations. It comes in a couple different loadings. The, uh, the high velocity loading puts a 150 grain bullet out at 2250 feet per second. Basically, that's AK-47 type ballistics in a little weenie round like that. Then the most interesting, possibly, very, uh, round, it shoots a 220 grain bullet. Peter, what's the? A 220 grain bullet at about 1,025 feet per second. Now why is that significant? That's just under the speed of sound. Oh, that's all noise. Now, it has to be cycled manually because, like I said, the gas system is turned off. Oh, that's impressive. Now, by just turning the little switch, engaging the gas system, it now can be operated semi-automatically. Now, this is full auto. Now then, friends, what we've been seeing have been real machine guns or real assault weapons, which are selective fire. And what we see now, you have an entire lineup of uh, all sorts of machine guns, and uh, Peter Kokalis is explaining. In fact, he went into a long uh, dissertation 
on what each one of these guns was for the crowd, which is over on our left there, which you really can't see too well right now. But they're going to give a firepower demonstration. They have a lot of explosive targets, like similar to what was being uh, shot a few minutes ago. And it is something else to behold when all these machine guns get cranked up at one time. I think you're going to be impressed. I'm sure you're enjoying our Soldier of Fortune convention footage. And you know, all those machine guns shooting at those explosive targets and all those other guns, you know what? No one was hurt, no one was injured, no one was even frightened because they were so careful in their safety precautions. You know, this is the first time I'm sure that almost all of you watching have seen real machine guns shooting, except here on this program in times past. This was such a tremendous demonstration of real firepower and of course the assault guns which were real that these people were using uh, out on the range there of course are all federally licensed they all are extremely well behaved and they're not guns that you and I can typically buy the only way we can own a real assault gun is to file the necessary federal papers and they go through a long background check and it's been that way since back in the 30s it has really uh, been a very very overstated case as far as machine guns out there. They're, they're just not out there. A lot of the TV shows, the, the common media, talk about all the machine guns on the street. It's not so. They're just not there. There may be a few, maybe imported from some other country. And you know what, friends? If the government and the anti-gun people are successful in taking our guns away from us, <laughs> they're going to come in by the boatload, by the train load, by the millions from out of this country. They're going to turn a lot of honest citizens into actual criminals. Friends, we've got to stop it. You know, this Benelli Super 90 shotgun looks, has 
according to some of those folks in Congress, looks like an assault type gun. This is nothing but a regular old 12 gauge recoil operated shotgun with a fancy grip on it and it's painted black or coated black. This gun in one form or another has essentially been around since the turn of the century. We're dealing with people that just don't get it. These people that want to take our guns away do not have a clue about life in the real world. This is a problem. Just like the anti-hunting people, they don't have a clue about what's really going on. They're out of touch with reality. They've watched too many cartoons. I'm sorry about it, but these people have to be stopped. You know, friends, these guns are all that stand between us, in most cases, between us and the criminal out here in, in the hinterlands, away from uh, police support. You know, the police can only do something. They can only come to help you if a crime has already been committed. They can't come and protect you before it happens. Well, my gosh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the criminal is not going to bother you when there are police around. They're going to wait until there's no one around but just you. And friends, that's when these guns stand between us and all sorts of terrible situations that are happening all around us every day. So friends, you can do something. Join the Shoot and Show Gun Club today now because as I've said before, we're going to go out here in the country. We're going to take the same approach as some of the anti-people have and we're going to be meeting with civic groups. We're going to uh, state our case as gun owners. We're going to explain why uh, guns are good for everyone, every responsible citizen to own if they want to, certainly. So you can join the Shoot and Show Gun Club. Call us, 1-800-895-7916. Again, 1-800-895-7916. And when you call up, please order a catalog. We'll send you one, and we'll send you a membership application. I think it'll be something that will help all of us. It'll certainly help us here on the program. Listen now, we need you. We've got a huge job to be done, and together we can do it. Not me, not you, but we. We can do it, so let's do it today. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. shooting enthusiasts, all of us should be subscribing to Shotgun News, the trading post for anything that shoots. Three big issues monthly, Shotgun News, Post Office Box 669, Hastings, Nebraska, that zip is 68902, for MasterCard or Visa, subscriptions only now, call them at 1-800-345-6923, again 1-800-345-6923. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to J.D. Jones, whom a lot of you are familiar with for his SSK Industries uh, products. And uh, I'm here to report that uh, he, is, he is really a nice fellow. I hate to ruin his reputation. I don't want this to get around, but uh, he is really a nice man. And of course, one of the most knowledgeable people today in custom guns and wildcat cartridges. So uh, J.D., tell us, uh, what would you like to show us first, sir? Well, let's start out with some of the pistols first. This is a custom Super Red Hawk with a heavy barrel and a very effective muzzle brake. We call this particular model the Beast because it is sort of a beast. With uh, 300 grain bullets at around 1,500 feet per second, we only get about one inch of muzzle rise due to this very effective brake. But the whole gun's been worked over completely from one end to the other, completely tuned. We can also make a 45 Colt conversion on this. It's an extremely effective and accurate gun. 
wait a minute. You said that this was a 44, right? This is a 44. All right, and you can convert. You can change calibers on this gun. Yeah, we can convert it to a 45 Colt. This one's a 45 Colt set up with a scope. Uh -huh. uh, this one we call the Beauty. Beauty and the Beast conversion. I think my old buddy Kelly and I had too much to drink in London when we came up with that name. <laughs> now, of course, you're best known probably for some of the custom contenders. But... Yeah, this is sort of a, a new barrel configuration here. Uh, we call it a diamond. Actually, it's tapered. It's a tapered diamond. Then we EDM slots through it and turn the barrel itself into a vent rib. Uh, we're using all stainless in this particular uh, type of gun. Uh, it is real pretty. Now, this one is in what caliber? Is it? This is a 6.5 JDJ. Okay, now you have a wide range of calibers that are pretty much proprietary to you. Right. Uh, that you have developed. Of course, some of these, uh, you call it, is this, uh, you call them hand cannons. I don't know if you call this one a hand cannon. No, this you is get into the bigger one. Cannon. We use a 225 Winchester case on this one. Open it up to six and a half millimeter. Blow it out for maximum case capacity. It does 2,400 feet per second with a 120. The nozzle or ballistic tip bullet will give us positive expansion at 300 yards on deer sized game. Exceptional accuracy out of it. The case is very strong, very durable. It lasts practically forever. I've loaded some of them 40, 50 times and not lost them. No. What you're getting is, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you will, uh, This you're getting performance out of a handgun in the neighborhood of, say, a 7 by 57 rifle, factory rifle cartridge. Yeah, we're getting in, right there. In that neighborhood. Yeah, you're real close. So that's the big brothers to it might be considered the, uh, the 309, which is on the 444 case. Uh -huh. Again, we're using the ballistic tip bullet for long range capability and positive expansion. And then if you want to punch holes in big things, we use the same 444 case neck to 375 for the 375 JDJ. Does a terrific job on everything up to it, including elephant. Um, what is your favorite, say, in your 375, which of course is, has gotten a lot of press over the past few years? Uh, what's your favorite bullet weight in the 375? Well, I use a 220 grain Hornaday for deer and deer-sized animals, black bear, that sort of thing. But the 270 Hornaday is where it's at for elk size game and things of that nature. I've shot some buffalo with it, uh, with the 270 Hornaday, and it does fine. I found with the 300 Hornaday in this particular caliber that I've had to pass up a lot of shots where there were herds involved in something like buffalo because it usually goes all the way through and you don't want to have uh, a cripple with a, uh, a projectile that's already exited one animal. Well, that's most impressive. Well, now, we watched you put on a demonstration yesterday uh, with a new cartridge that uh, called the 300 Whisper, am I correct? All right, J.D., said us. I was looking for one of the cutaways, and they all got away, but I got one back. This is a 221 Fireball cartridge utilizing a 240-grain projectile in a subsonic yeah. mode. That's the, a... the Sierra Match King is an extremely efficient bullet. If you start it out at about 1,040 feet per second at the muzzle, it only loses 65 feet per second in the first 200 yards of flight. And, uh, What's your ballistic coefficient on that? What, 600 plus? Tell you the truth, I can't remember. But it's way on up there. That's unbelievable flight characteristics. But uh, you want to try a close-up of that, the, uh, the folks can see just uh, how little case capacity there is. And this what's it. This is what makes it so easy to silence. Mm -hmm. uh, very little muzzle flash, very little heat generated. All of these things go to make a very quiet cartridge. That's why we call it the whisper. And good bench rest configuration. 
with bench rest care and loading ammunition, this will uh, this will hold half minute angle and 100 yards up on it. That's, that's hard. To, proper rifle. Well, this is something that I don't think anybody ever thought about before. I mean, certainly, I never. Uh, this is something a concept that most of us had not considered. Well, not really. I don't think many people have. I think this is the first cartridge that's ever been developed with the thought of subsonic extreme accuracy, great ballistic efficiency, and the ability to give exceptional control and full automatic fire, and also to uh, be very simple to uh, convert an M16. As you saw yesterday, the shot the M16, all you do to convert a 223 to a 300 whisper, pull the back pin, pull the front pin, take the 223 unit off, put the 300 whisper unit on, put the pins back in, load the M16 magazine with the 300 whisper ammo and you're ready to go. Now are you, are you building an upper for this with a barrel configuration right. so they can actually get that? Of course, uh, this won't be for everyone, but we think this is a terrific idea. See, we're big into home defense, but we've got a lot of people to watch our show that are sure. worried about about their homes. Well, you don't have the over-penetration problem right. with this sort of thing, and yet it's extremely uh, it's extremely deadly because with the subsonic ammunition, without the suppressor, it sounds about like a 9mm pistol that won't blow ears out if you shoot it indoors. And the bullets are designed to go end over end shortly after impact, and they're quite lethal. So it's not going to penetrate through four, four or five different walls and right. hurt someone outside. It'll get through a car body and that sort of thing and be pretty uh, rough on the people in, inside. But we have a, uh, a high velocity mode for it that duplicates the 762 by 39 ballistically. The gas system is quite simple. The system is set right now with no gas at all. Mm -hmm. When you fire it, nothing happens, just like a bolt action rifle. You have to manipulate the bolt to operate it. Okay, then. You just simply turn it to high for the high velocity ammunition. Want to shoot subsonic? Turn it the other direction. The rate of fire remains the same. The normal situation when you do that in an ordinary gun is the cyclic rate goes out of control and just beats the gun to death. The cyclic rate on full auto stays exactly the same with this. Well, that's the, it was most impressive yesterday. Friends, of course, we can actually buy suppressors with the proper form. Is that right? That's correct. With the proper government form, we still can do that. Now, in, in most states, in some most states, states you can't. However, without the can, it's still a viable hunting rifle, target rifle, rifle you can shoot in your backyard with a 200 greens capability, and you're not going to wake up the countryside, even without the suppressor. Well, uh, I see this as exciting. Uh, one of the one of the neatest new concepts to come along in some time. There's another configuration for it in a contender. And That's our beam. What you have a laminated stock, a contender action with one of your barrels, and of course the suppressor. Right. Uh, now, what kind of performance can you get, say, out of a little gun like this? Three-inch, 200-yard groups, wind didn't blow. <laughs> now, friends, I know a lot of you are going to have interest in J.D.'s products, and you can call SSK Industries at area 614-264-0176. Again, area 614-264-0176. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the Soldier of Fortune Convention 93 down in Las Vegas, and we're at the USA Magazine booth, and we're talking with uh, Stanley Smith, who's a company representative. They have some absolutely fantastic products here, aside from a lot of the regular magazines uh, that you're, I'm, I'm sure, already aware of. They have a terrific speed loader for the 12-gauge, and I'm just going to turn it over to him and let him show you how great this little device works. Thank you, Kurt. What we have is the uh, Arms Tech USA Magazine's tech loader. And the tech loader utilizes a no-gun smithing bracket that attaches to the shotgun. You knock out the pins that hold the trigger group in, you put on the bracket, you put on the carriage bolt, you tighten the screws. It takes just about that long. The tech loader uses a tube that holds four two and three-quarter inch shot shells. The tech loader tube is just placed up against the shotgun. 
and four shot shells are loaded that quickly into the shotgun. The entire system includes two tubes and handles, a holster, the no gun smithing bracket, and an instructional video. And yes, I know a lot of you are going to be interested in these speed loaders for shotguns. Call USA Magazines at 1-800-872-2577. Again, 1-800-872-2577. Hi, I'm Bob Brown, Vietnam veteran and publisher of Soldier of Fortune magazine, described by some as the most politically incorrect magazine in the United States. Every issue we publish in-depth, provocative articles by our investigative reporters on the efforts of gun-grabbing politicians and the BATF to undermine our Second Amendment rights and what you can do to stop them. Also, on-site coverage of the government's abuse of power has occurred in the Randy Weaver tragedy and the Waco fiasco. No puff, no fluff, in-depth technical reviews of new firearms and ammo. In short, hard-hitting action articles of immediate interest to all real Americans, available from no other mainstream media. You need the other side of the story. That's why I'm offering a one-year subscription to Soldier of Fortune for only $22. That's over a 50% saving. Also, we're going to throw in a free 67-page bonus coverage of all our Waco material that's appeared in Soldier of Fortune and how it affects you. Call our 1-800 number now. And friends, you can call our Shoot and Show 800 number. That's 1-800-895-7916. Ask for Department SOF for Soldier of Fortune, and we'll take MasterCard or Visa, check or money order. So call us at 1-800-895-7916, Department SOF, $22 for a year of Soldier of Fortune plus the Waco Supplement. It's a great bargain, friends, for a great magazine. Well, friends, we've run out of time again, and we're going to have to come back to the Soldier Fortune Convention because there's so many things that we didn't get to feature tonight. We just ran out of time, and I know there are a lot of things you're really going to want to see. We thank everyone who's joined the Shoot and Show Gun Club. Friends, we need to do this today because we have such a terrific job that all of us have to do and keeping our rights to keep them bare arms. Anyway, we'll see you next week on another shooting show.